I'm calling this meeting of the Silver City Town Council to order. Would you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And on behalf of the town council, we'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. We'll begin by asking the council if there's any changes to the agenda. Yes, sir. No changes. And we'll move over to council comments. First on the list tonight is Council of Edison. Thank you, Mayor. Kind of completely unprepared. It was my turn to go first. Uh, so I just wanted to let folks know that at last weekend's policy committee meeting, uh, the um, resolution that we approved um, at the prior meeting, at our meeting, about the Municipal Boundary Commission has moved forward to be looked at by um, league staff, and it's going to be made a bit more generalized, like most of our resolutions are, because we want to kind of keep uh, some of that information about how we would like it to change kind of in our back pocket for negotiation tactics with the legislature, but we do know that that will not be part of the upcoming legislature, so um, that we will be presenting it in its revised form at the Resolutions Committee. And then again, it will come before um, the delegates at the convention for a vote. So they were really pleased about, uh, with that. I know, Mayor, you were in the same policy committee that I was in, so they were very pleased with the fact that we that Silver City actually brought that forward as something that needed to be dealt with. So, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Connell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have just a couple of actually funding. The first one is that since I was in Albuquerque for a policy committee for Municipal League this weekend, I also took um, some time to spend some time training for our senior Olympians who were participating um, and are still participating in the National Games in Albuquerque. And so far we have um, so a few pretty big winners. The softball team at last we heard was um, battling for silver. So that means, you know, there'll be either second or third in the whole country. I can tell you that the people that won gold, the team that won gold in the 70s division um, are a semi-pro team. So I don't know, that's kind of not fair. So the way I see it is we, we were doing even better than that, than the silver. Um, and also in horseshoes in the, I think it's the 70 to 75, but it might be 75 to 79, um, our third place in the whole country was Fidel Quintana, who is from I'm from Silver City. And fourth place, he actually beat the person that he beats for all the senior games here, and that's Preston Harper, who's also from Grand County. So that's pretty exciting. Um, New, New Mexico is, I believe, in third for medal, a uh, number of medals right now, and they still have a week to go. Um, the next thing is that the committee that is working on the District 4 Territorial Charter Day event is has been meeting, or has met, and I just have to say I have to give it to the, the Silver City Police Department because they have stepped up in a major way and um, I really appreciate Chief Portillo and uh, Code Enforcement Officer Howdy and Officer Lopez who are the three that are, are working with this committee along with Mr. Marshall and Mr. Staley and Chief Lambert. Um, instead of just having National Night Out, we've decided to make it a little bit more fun and a little bit more interesting and the Silver City Police Department has decided to challenge some of their, their fellow uh, law enforcement and first responders to a battle of the badges, which is going to be a friendly dodgeball tournament. <laughs> um, I think the community is really going to enjoy watching that. Um, it will be held at Golf Park. There will be some celebrity judges uh, or celebrity referees that will be in town to, to help with that. And um, there will be a prize to the agency that, that wins. So look forward to that. It'll be on Saturday, August 3rd, and it'll be from 4 to 10 at Buff Park. And there will be food available and booths for kids and all kinds of fun stuff. And then the last thing is, this morning, um, I met with several other community members along with, um, at Western University with Lieutenant Governor Morales. 
the conversation at that meeting was about baseball and women's soccer being brought to, to Western. I know a lot of people are interested in that happening, and we continue to work on it. It's, it is a process. It is a legislative process, so it's going to take probably several years, but um, it seems like people are starting to to get together and focus a little bit more on that. So hopefully we'll see some improvement, some work on that. And I think that the town will benefit very much from having both of those programs eventually. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Ray. Thank you, Mayor. The only thing I have is that um, we're gonna have a public meeting for the SPIN program, the SPIN, and it's gonna be at the Knights of Columbus building on 1301 Swan Street. And I'm inviting all the people that are that want to be there and see what it's all about, even in District Three, because they supposedly want to do some sort of a project there on the, on the Capilla. So it'll be July 13th at 10 a.m. at the Knights of Columbus Building. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Eamon Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple of things. First is to acknowledge what a rockin' event the Fiesta Latina was. Um, this Friday is the Wild and Scenic Film Festival at Light Hall at WNMU, and we as a town council wrote a letter, it was sponsored by uh, Councilor Cano, to endorse the naming of the Gila River, the Wild and Scenic River, so you could learn more about that if you wanted to go to that film festival. And July 13th is just going to be an action-packed day because that's also the District 2 Territorial Charter Volunteer Day. Behind the historic waterworks, we're going to be installing native pollinator plants, good for pollinators, and uh, benches, and a table, and a walking labyrinth. But I think you could probably go to SPIN and then come to the District 2 Volunteer Day. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council comments? Next on the agenda is uh, approval of the minutes of the June 11, 2019 regular meeting. Do I hear a motion? Councilor Mayor. Councilor Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the regular council meeting of June 11, 2019. Thank you. Do we have a second? Councilor Benson. Mr. Mayor, I second the motion to stay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Next on the agenda is public input. I see that two people signed up. Uh, and I'd like to remind you that we have a five minute limit on public input. And first will be Trent Bow. Thank you. First, I will put the mayor. Hi everyone, um, I'm Trent Bowl. I a resident here from Silver City. Um, first, I just want to thank all of you guys for your for your service. Um, you know, this is a lot of time you guys spend to come out here and take care of our, our community. And I value that. And Chief, I want to tell you that I've noticed from a guy who spends a lot of time out in business here in town, towns change to seem to be less violent and more more peaceful place than it was probably even a couple of years ago. So my perception is you're doing a great job and I appreciate that. Um, I want to talk about maybe my background a little bit too. Um, and Ray saluting the flag at the end of the pledge reminded me of, of something me and him both did when we signed that line and spent some time in the services. Um, you know, I'm very big about personal freedom. I think this is a country that was built on freedoms. And I think uh, when we when we go out of our way to either project fears on on possible freedoms for other people that aren't realized or or even manifesting as something that's a reality, but we the last couple of years we've talked about this. I heard nothing but a whole bunch of accusations that things would go south and the world would end. Um, I can tell you that I was in Rio del Sol over the weekend. The thing was Snoop Dogg. I was with Graham Hancock a month ago in Sedona. I was with Joe Rogan two week or two months ago in California. Each one of these events I was at, I saw UTVs going in and out of small restaurants and shops and navigating these small towns. So my background is I have Smokey Joe's, I have Cactus Jacks, and I also have the medical dispensary here in town. I'll be reopening in a couple of weeks. When we didn't do this UTV vehicle bill last year, um, personally, 
I had acquired a spot by my grocery store to do UTV rentals, tours, cheap rentals, to try to get some of the Moab esque, get people in town, penetrate our small artists and shops, and uh, just see what we have to offer in Silver City. During this year, I've seen a lot of RVs come in town, stay at the campground, and not seeing anybody penetrating our town and seeing our, our, our beautiful streets because the vehicles are too big for our tiny town. Um, moreover, a couple other things that happened because of that. I, because I spent so much time in Arizona, um, I actually ended up putting a factory there. And I had uh, talked about this earlier that you know, some of the thing about Silver City that attracted me is it seemed like a place that was about quality of life. And uh, what I've seen is I have to attract workers here. This is the biggest thing about getting people and having business in Silver City is where do you attract talented workers who are credited and operate different machines. So since this, I've put a factory in Tempe. I have another factory that I'm going to have to scale up and put somewhere. And again, I have to look for somewhere I can attract talent. And when I don't have a town that I feel has enough to attract people, it's sometimes easier to find talent where it's at. And that's where I, I, I kind of feel like we're bumping into a town that's not progressive enough to attract talent. And where does that leave employers like myself? You know, I've got 15 people that work for me here in town. I have 15 people that work out of town. I'd love to put more people in town, but the reality is where do you get the workers or how do you attract them in? And right now, there's businesses closing. I think the art store just closed. There's a rolled up um, Wendy's or Burger King right next to us. So it's, this is a, a tough shake. I've seen a lot of businesses go, a lot of them come. Um, I don't have any intention of going anywhere, but right now I spend 30 weeks of the year outside of town. So my view is you know, pretty, pretty southwestern in what I see, but what I truly see is we, uh, we fight progress, and what that does for us, it limits our ability to attract people who want to live here, people who want to recreate here, and people who want to spend money here. So that's why I think we struggle to gain size like many communities outside of our area because when we fight new things, personal freedoms, by projecting something that's not real, I, you know, the average age of these owners, I'm, I'm probably a young one at 45, Ray's probably more typical of who owns these vehicles. So, uh, you know, I think that's, that's something that, that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, and at the end, it's costly to the town, costly to the citizens. And, uh, you know, for a personal freedom town, it, it really looks to, to limit that. So, you know, I would definitely think a, a public vote would probably get the full support of this. Uh, I mean, there's, I think, if from just the people coming in here, typically it was two to one on how many people were against it. So, I, you know, I would definitely encourage moving this to a public vote. I think that we're definitely at a tight split. I would come down to the mayor again. And uh, it's probably a rehash of last year. So I think the best thing we can do is let the citizens decide what's right for them and then move to that. But thank you for your time. I, I do again appreciate everybody's thank you. here. Thank you very much. Next is uh, John Alvarez. Thank you, Mayor. I, I turned it off. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, I was here before. My name is John Alvarez, and uh, I came from South Dakota with the Polaris Ranger. And at that time, I thought they were going to have it legalized to drive a Polaris Ranger. $22,000 vehicle. I just put New Mexico drip license on it. I got it insured. It's street legal and ready to rock and roll. 
but it's not passed yet. And I'm praying to God because it's a complete different ballgame for me. Uh, when I got here, my wife was still working and I got to meet a lot of people and a lot of friends and that helped out. My wife retired. A month later, she ended up getting cancer. She's gone through the first stage already, and now we're going to fight the second stage, and possibly up to December. I need transportation because I can't drive a vehicle, period. I sustained a brain injury 30 years ago, and my doctor said, you can drive a Polaris, you can drive a four-wheel drive, but you cannot drive a car. It don't make sense, because I got my license driving a vehicle. I haven't had any accidents. I've got about, well, anyway, that's, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good on the wheel. Anyway, the people that have been helping me to take my wife up, and it's been like eight to nine times we had to call 911 because I couldn't do anything. Uh, she's been to, she even took a flight up there to uh, Las Cruces on the helicopter so they can stabilize her. We got her back. My son is a registered nurse. He helped me out with a lot. But there's still a lot of things that I don't know how to handle. And with the help of my friends in Silver City, we're getting through this. Now there's times where I couldn't get nobody to take her. I had to drive my Polaris to the hospital. And then I drove her back home, which took three hours. She could not drive, she could not walk. So I had to take it a four wheel drive around my house on a I got an acre, so I went all the way around, parked it by the door, and got her to the bathroom, got her to bed, and that took three hours. Without, and I couldn't find nobody to get her to go take her and all that. So there's times that you can't do anything. Um, I just hope that we can pass. Everybody's got a different story. This is my second story, and I just hope. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at my clock here. Uh, um, I just hope that this thing can get passed so I can legally drive my wife to the hospital and bring her home safely. Uh, I really appreciate you guys listening to my problem and hopefully that we can get this thing going. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next on the agenda is reports. Mr. Marshall, do you have any reports? No, sir. Okay. Next is item 10, unfinished business. Under unfinished business item A, is the approval slash disapproval of ordinance number 1280, an ordinance amending chapter 34, section 34-201A, B, and C, relating to aggressive begging and prohibited solicitations upon town-owned streets and public rights of way, and chapter 10, Section 10-137, unsolicited entry onto private property prohibited. 
and Section 10-139, unlawful to enter upon posted premises of the Town of Silver City Municipal Code. Councilor Bettison. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so the purpose of this ordinance is to ensure that the public has the right to free speech. But what they don't have the right to, and that is now addressed in the revision and in this particular um, ordinance, is that they can't do it in an aggressive manner that intentionally or recklessly makes any physical contact with or touches another person in the course of solicitation or other expressive speech without the person's consent. That they cannot intentionally or recklessly cause another to reasonably fear imminent bodily harm or the commission of a criminal act upon their person or property in the course of solicitation or other expression of speech without the person's consent. It includes um, intimidating another without their consent for the purpose of seeking money or other valuable property and intentionally or recklessly blocking the safe or free patches, passage of another, whether a pedestrian, an operator of a motor vehicle, or a bicycle on a public street and rights of way. So this is all about behavior, not about your right as an individual to solicit um, to solicit for money or to do anything like that. It's, it's really about things where people would feel threatened or passages blocked by, by these individuals. So that's the tenor of this, but I know that Mr. Scavern wants to speak to something that he recently found that we're going to have to also delete, and I'll be making an amendment for that when I move to approve this motion because there's a section that He'll talk about in another chapter that needs to be added and deleted. Mr. Scavron? Yes, Mayor and Council. There, uh, in a, a different project I was working on, I came across a section that was kind of buried, and uh, it's uh, specifically it's section 36-2211. And again, it's a prohibition of vending, selling, peddling, or offer for sale any commodity except when the vending, selling, peddling, or offering is to the benefit of a charitable or nonprofit purpose. There was a case in Alamogordo recently that held that to be unconstitutional. It was too vague. It gave too much discretion to the town council as to what groups would be allowed to sell, vend, or offer uh, it makes a differentiation between charitable, nonprofit purposes and commercial purposes, which is not appropriate. And uh, this provision needs to be deleted, not replaced, not modified, just deleted. The last time we looked at this was, I think, probably 2005 or six, and uh, the case law has evolved. So. What I suggested to Councillor Bettison was that this, this uh, particular provision is in line with the other actions that are being taken. I don't think it's, re it's uh, significant enough to have to go back and republish and do a new NOI. I think this falls within the general area of uh, appropriate and non-appropriate regulation of the freedom of speech. So I'd like uh, the, this ordinance to include a, an amended uh, statement saying that uh, this particular section, which is sec it's chapter 36, section 36-2211, be deleted in its entirety. Um. Mr. Mayor, I just want to point out that while this is going to be added in my motion, uh, there's still a provision in here in the in the ordinance as written, and under uh, on the last page, so page three, 
It says that Chapter 10, Section 139 current is deleted in its entirety and it's replaced with Section 139 unlawful to enter upon posted premises. This doesn't, deleting this, what we just talked about, does not change this section, is my understanding, which means that if people do not want anyone to come onto their property, right. they have to post a sign stating no peddlers allowed or no solicitation allowed on their on their on the border of their property. So that is still permitted. It's 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 just like and, and that that's not going to change with the deletion of the chapter that he mentioned. I, am I correct? Yes, the, the yeah. section that's being deleted is uh, it's vague. It gives too much discretion to the town council and it makes a distinction between uh, commercial and non-commercial speech and all of that has been held uh, not to be constitutional and there is one case in New Mexico that specifically threw out an ordinance very much like this uh, not too long ago and so none of this has to do with the issue that uh, Councilor Benison was mentioning uh, basically the courts have said that it's not up to the town government to decide who can enter someone else's property. It's up to, they leave that, especially for solicitation, it's not for criminal purposes, but for solicitation. It says that the property owner is the one that makes the ultimate decision on who can come on their property to solicit or do whatever, you know, in that vein, sell, solicit, vend, uh, proselytize, I think you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So that's left to the individual homeowner. If you want to avoid people coming onto your property to send, to sell, then proselytize, whatever, put a sign up. And that sign will be a denial of entrance. And if the person is, st if someone still goes ahead and enters after that sign, now it's an unconsented trespass. Call the police. Okay. Anything else, Council Hudson? Are you ready for your amendment? I'm ready for the, the motion, and then if, um, and then we can, okay. after it's, if it's a second, okay. then we can discuss. Any questions for Council Hudson or comment? So, if I be more quickly, if I get it really quickly, when you put a sign that says no trespassing, that's not good enough. No, it, it, it needs to be more defined. No trespassing, it should be enough, but it's not enough. Okay, okay, thank you. So, thank you. I think in answer to you, Councillor Ray, I think it's going to be either no peddlers allowed or no solicitation allowed. Those are the two signs that establish that right. you will not, that it would be if they came on your property, that then that's, un, that's not consented by you. And actually, I would suggest putting in the no trespassing sign as well, because then what if they're coming on the property is not really to sell or vend, they're, they're pretending they are, but they're actually coming to, to scope out your house so that they can rob it. So I, I would follow the ordinance and put the no solicitors, no, no uh, uh, solicitation, but if you wanted to also add to that, it doesn't detract from the sign, you could say no trespassing as well. Okay. But you need the other two terms. Okay. All right. Thank you. Council Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve of ordinance number 1280, an ordinance amending chapter 34, section 34-201A, B, and C, relating to aggressive begging and prohibited solicitations upon town oak streets and public rights of way, and chapter 10, section 10-137, unsolicited entry into private property prohibited and section 10-139 unlawful to enter upon posted premises of the town of Silver City Municipal Code to include the following amendment delete chapter 36 section 36-2211 
regarding vending and selling on public property in its entirety. Thank you. We have a motion, and a, which includes an amendment. Do we have a second? Councilor Ray? Thank you, ma'am. I'll second the amendment. Motion and second. Uh, any discussion? All in, this is a roll call, please, ma'am. Councilor Madison? Aye. Councilor Angus Smith? Aye. Councilor Ray? Aye. Councilor Cotter? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. The next item under new business is the approval slash disapproval of a public celebration permit application and waiver of NMSA 1978 60-6B-10 for alcohol sales near a church for the second annual Silver City Wine Festival to be held at Golf Park on July 13 through 14, 2019. Sponsor, New Mexico Wine, license holder information, license number 60029, owner name, Precept Wine LLC, DBA, Grit Winery, 5400 Pan American Freeway, Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87113. I think Mr. Dave Grill will present his request. Thank you, Mayor, Council. I'm Dave Grill, a co-owner of uh, La Esperanza Winery with my wife, Esperanza. And I'm representing uh, Mr. Chris Goblet, who is our executive director for New Mexico Wines. He was here in front of you uh, last April, I believe April 8th. And we, at that time, thanks to you, uh, approved 12 different PCPs. One has, for many reasons, has had to drop out. And so the replacement for that particular winery is Precip Wine LLC. A little bit about Precip. Precip is our largest winery in the state of New Mexico. In relationship, us down in Mimbes, we only do about a thousand cases of wine a year. They do over 200,000 cases of wine. Precip is also the largest privately owned wine entity in the Northwest. They're in about five different states. They're hooked up now uh, doing business with Grue, and I think all of you know about Grue, international award winning uh, type sparkling wine, can't say the other word. And uh, in addition, my daughter works for Grue. She is now third or fourth in command with Grue. She has come up the ranks and she also runs a testing lab for all the wineries in New Mexico. So, with your permission, I'm, I respectfully request that we approve the PCP. And uh, let me just give you an update. I'm really thrilled in working with the town manager, the town clerk, and, and, and organizing this event, helping the two entities. Uh, everything's going great. In fact, tomorrow we'll be getting the banners and talking to the fire chief. He recommended highly the size of the banner and where we should put them. And he recommended on the archway coming in a two foot by 20 foot double sided banner. And after, of course, the 4th of July events, he recommended we put it on top of the gazebo at Golf Park. So all of, all of the arrangements are coming together. All the vendors are being signed up. All the wineries are getting signed up. Uh, it's just going to be a wonderful event that we're going to have here in Silver City. Another event on July 13th. That will be a third one. But they can also go on the 14th to the Wine Fest. So I think it's going to be a great, great weekend, Honorable Mayor and Council. And I respectfully request your approval. Thank you, Mr. Gurley. Uh Any questions, comments from the council? Any questions or comments from the general public? Do I hear a motion? Councilor Connor. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve a public celebration permit application and waiver of the NMSA 1978 60-6B-10 for alcohol sales near a church for the second annual Silver City Wine Festival to be held at Golf Park on July 13 through 14, 2019. Sponsor New Mexico Wine and License Holder Information, License Number 60029. Owner Name, Precept Wine, LLC. Doing business as Grey Winery, 5400 Pan American Freeway, Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87113. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Councilor Ray? 
The Speaker has second the motion to stay. Councilor Bowson? You had your light on, Councilor Larry. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Is there any other comment or discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is 11B, the approval slash disapproval of notice of intent, ordinance number 1282, an ordinance amending chapter 22, article 2, smoking in public places of the municipal code of the town of Silver City, New Mexico. Council Amon Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to take us, first, I want to take us back a little bit into time and uh, to let the public and, and, and the general listeners on the, the TV know that back in 2001, Silver City was one of the first municipalities in New Mexico to pass uh, ordinance, an ordinance about not smoking in enclosed public places. The state of New Mexico didn't pass a similar ordinance until many years later. During the time that's passed, uh, having lit uh, tobacco weeds is not the only way that people uh, enjoy nicotine and other substances. And this past the legislative session, our New Mexico State Legislature passed a, a bill which included uh, language about vaping and e-cigarettes and included cannabis as being something that they did not want people to be smoking in enclosed public places. That bill was signed by the governor on April 2nd uh, and just literally three weeks later, uh, one of our Department of Health outreach folks, Michelle D.C., who's sitting back there beaming me emotional support, contacted me and said, what about we fold this updated language into our ordinance here. I've, I've been working with uh, our attorney, Robert Scavron, since then, and what we have in front of you is a notice of intent, which means that if it's passed by the council, it's an opportunity for further research, further analysis, further holding of, of, uh, of this ordinance. And what it does is it essentially does fold in the language from the state statute that is appropriate and applies to us as a town. So it would continue to prohibit any kind of smoking, vaping, of any kind of a product to, uh, inside of publicly accessible buildings. So that would include most small businesses, it would include all schools, daycare centers, including private homes that service daycare facilities for uh, for young people or for adult care. So there's a variety of things that the state statute included that really isn't appropriate, and so we didn't include it here. So we're not having language saying that we're going to not have spoken the state capital. Doesn't make sense here. But the other language that lays out where you can uh, smoke or vape, which means inhale or not inhale a vaporized liquid substance, including anything that has tobacco or any kind of flavoring or any kind of smell or cannabis in a public facility, that is all included. So the information that was used to craft this in a lie really came from the state statute. And there are a couple of things that are particular to our town that we have included. Back in 2001, it was included that the community park, Penny Park, would be a place in which no smoking would be allowed. And that was because of the great deal of research that indicated secondhand smoke had a really bad effect on children and indeed on adults. This ordinance also reaffirms that the town manager has the authority upon his discretion and his research and analysis to ban smoking in any other public park or open space as he deems appropriate. So that's a reaffirmation and it's put out there so that for greater public information, you will know what is allowed and what's not, not allowed in terms of smoking or vaping here in the town. So that's the background. I think I did that in three minutes or less. I'm, I'm hoping. All right. So 
Any questions for council members? Councilor Pettis? Councilor Cummings? I'm actually going to borrow a comment. Um, I, I love this. Uh, I definitely support it. But section 2223, subsection 12, which is the one you were just talking about, um, where it says that um, any park, trail, open space, or town or the town which has been designated or ordered by the town manager, I would like to see that removed. I think it should just be any park, trail, open space in the town. It should be a smoke free area. I don't think there should be a, yeah, you can do it at this park, but you can't do it at that one. Um, my other concern is that we don't necessarily always aren't going to have a town manager who is okay with not smoking. Maybe that's someone who loves to smoke and, and decides they want to be able to smoke, and so they decide that later on. Um, I think if we're going to do this, we should just do it and be done with it because there are plenty of parks where adults hang out where they don't want to have to be found with smoke either, too, not just children. When, when we have a motion, then you can uh, make an amendment proposal, okay? Yeah, I feel the amendment would be welcome. Do I? Wait a minute. I think, Any other questions? I think Councilor Ray's looking at like you want to ask something. Councilor Benson? I first wanted to state that I wholeheartedly agree with Councilor Cano because I know that I've attended events um, at Golf Park and I have people say, can we can we make this a designated space where people can't smoke? Because I'm out here breathing the fresh air and I don't necessarily want to breathe secondhand smoke. So I, I, I completely agree with that. The other question I have is on section 22-25 where it says reasonable distance defined. I thought that the original uh, state statute stated that it had to be uh, no closer, that smoking could not occur closer than 20 feet to any open window or door of a building. I thought it was 50. At least 20. It's, and, and at the university, I think we do it at 25. So that means that, for instance, uh, let's take an example. If you are in an outdoor space that is surrounded by a building, you know, the building is around it. You can't smoke in that outdoor space because you're too close to an open window or door, and and that would then subject folks in the facility um, or the building to secondhand smoke, even if they're not they're near an open window, but it could be on the back side of the building or something like that. The window is open. So I just clarification is I thought that that's what it said for in the original state statute was 20 feet. I didn't see anything about 20 feet in the amendments, uh, the the recent amendments that were signed. Uh, I didn't see any distance. What, what it talked about was where it looked as to the effect, uh, where there, if any smoke infiltrates through ventilation, through doorway, through passageway, that's wrong, whether it's 20 feet or 30 or 40 feet. So it has to do with the effect of the smoke. If it infiltrates a, a smoke-free area, it's wrong. It can't be done. Now, an individual business has the power to designate its entire business and, and the area of the business, like a patio, as a non-smoking area. Whether it would infiltrate the building or not, nothing in this ordinance takes away the uh, power authority of a property owner to declare the entire property as a smoke free area. I, I, I would say that I'm now thinking that maybe that was something that after Silver City had done the ordinance, that was something that uh, Western New Mexico University had right. done. And they had taken it a step further and made sure that. Um, that it was not within 20 feet of a uh, right. door or window. And, and okay. some, some, I mean, I think uh, Bisbee, uh, we were at Bisbee recently and they had a sign <coughs> on business saying it was a restaurant, no smoking within 15 feet. So, yeah, but we're uh, looking at more of the effect because right. at 16 feet the smoke can still infiltrate. So the legislature apparently is looking at the uh, infiltration of smoke and that you shouldn't have to walk through a smoking area to get to a non-smoking area. And one other comment, uh, if you decide the way of dealing with the suggestion of Councilor Cano 
would be rather than getting rid of uh, various sections, just on, on number 12, that's section 22-2312. Right now, this is where smoking is prohibited. It says any park, trail, open space of the town, which, and I would suggest just deleting all the language following it, yeah. which has been designated and ordered by the town manager to be a smoke-free area. Just having any park, trail, or open space of the town accomplishes what she wants to do. Okay. Do I hear a motion to for that change? Um, yeah. I have a motion on the, uh, on the ordinance on the NOI first. Yes, let me do that, please. Thank you, sir. Um, so I move to approve. Let me get up so that I can see it here in my computer. I move to approve. Notice of intent of ordinance number 1282. An ordinance amending chapter 22, article 2, smoking in public places of the municipal code of the town of Sioux City, New Mexico, with the following amendment on Ron Aiken at and is it 22 22-2311 yes, and 12. 12 and you're going to eliminate the language following the word town so eliminate any of the language following the word town so that 12 would read in a park, trail, open space of the town does all the council members understand? Mm -hmm. okay yes we have a motion and, and an amendment, which includes an amendment. Do we have a second? Yes, ma'am. A second by motion is stated and amended. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion or comment? Actually, I have a little further discussion and comment. And that is that I, our town attorney and I went round and round about his right system. That was something that I already wanted about, too. And our chapter and the state amended legislation did not have that. But I'm very familiar with a variety of organizations like hospitals that have a sign that say no smoking within 20 feet. Um, so remember, the NLI means that this is open for uh, more research analysis and comments. So I'm not interested to uh, appropriate kinds of changes. Any other comments? Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. The next item is 11C, the approval slash disapproval of resolution number 1219-18, a resolution to participate in local government road fund program administered by New Mexico Department of Transportation. Mr. Marshall. Mr. Mayor and Council, this is the pretty much the annual resolution that you see regarding the um, fog seal and chip seal. And the locations are delineated in the resolution as well as the attachment that you had in your packet. Any questions? Any questions or comments from Mr. Marshall? Do I hear a motion? Um, I, I just wanted to say that the very first phone call I got when I was elected was from a woman who lived on Paul Place who told me that it had been 30 years that she had been waiting for this to happen. So I know that the, the people that live in this area are going to be very, very thankful. Thank you. Um, so may I would move to approve of Resolution number 2019-18, a resolution to participate in local government road fund program administrated by New Mexico Department of Transportation. Thank you. Is there a second? Councilor Ray? Thank you, Mayor. I'll second it as well. For a motion and second. Is there any comment or discussion from the council? Roll call, please, Anne. Councilor Tano? Aye. Councilor Ray? Aye. Councilor Amon Smith? Aye. Councilor Metz? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. The next item is 11D, the approval slash disapproval of resolution number 2019-19, a resolution supporting the town of Silver City's participation 
in a capital outlay program administered by the New Mexico Department of Transportation for road improvements to include rights of way in Silver City, Grand County, New Mexico. Mr. Marshall? Mayor and Council, I, I think you're well aware that Little Walnut Road has been on the plans for the town for many, many years. And this is a Department of Transportation, 100% at $275,000 with the town to pay anything in excess of that and we'll be acquiring rights of way. Um, most of the engineering has been done. The right of way that needs to be acquired has been identified and we'd like to proceed. Any questions or comments? Councilor Benson? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to mention that I believe that this was legislatively appropriated. Um, this uh, during the 2019 legislative uh, session, correct? Correct. Okay, so this is your tax dollars um, that go to the state coming back to us. Any other comments or questions? Do I hear a motion? Go ahead. Let's go for ourselves. Council Lehman Smith, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Councilor Lehman Smith. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve um, the resolution 2019-19, a resolution supporting the town of Tennessee's participation in the capital outlet program administered by the New Mexico Department of Transportation for road improvements to include rights of way in Silver City, Grant County, New Mexico. Thank you. Is there a second? Councilor Benson? Mr. Mayor, I second the motion as stated. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or discussion among the council? Yes. Mr. Mayor, Councilor I want to that uh, similar to Councilor Connors, which is one of the first bits of information I got when I was elected was how much we needed to do work on the little wall road. And so I'm delighted that the state legislature has appropriated these funds. Thank you. Any other comments? Discussion. Council Benson. I just want to thank town staff and every one of the of those of us on the um, on the town council for you know supporting um, that this allocation of capital outlay. I think this is really important, and it's just like I said, it's another way for us to get the state tax dollars that everybody pays to come back to our community for road improvements and other things that we need. So thank you to the staff. Um, if you would, uh, Mr. Any other comments, questions, discussion? Roll call, please, Anne. Councilor Benson? Aye. Councilor Ana Smith? Aye. Councilor Ray? Aye. Councilor Connor? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Next item is 11E, the approval slash disapproval of resolution number 2019-20. A resolution supporting the town of Silver City's participation in a capital outlay program administered by the New Mexico Department of Transportation for sidewalks in Silver City, Grand County, New Mexico. Mr. Marshall. Mr. Mayor and Council, this is another legislative allocation for 2019 for $300,000 with a 0% match and the town to pay anything in excess of 300000 However, this will be tagged into the 2018 legislative allocation for $125,000, giving us four twenty-five. dollars well, the engineer's estimate was $408,000, and it will be for sidewalks on Market and Yankee off of board. Thank you. Any questions or comments, Mr. Marshall? Do I hear a motion? Councilor Ray? Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve a resolution number 2019-20, a resolution supporting the town of Silver City's participation in the capital outlay program administered by the New Mexico Department of Transportation for sidewalks in Silver City, Grand County, New Mexico. Have a motion. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Councilor Connor. I'll second that motion. Is seated. Motion and second. Any comment or discussion in the council? 
Council Benson. I just want to thank staff again for uh, moving this forward and getting the funding and the fact that we can combine those forces to complete the task. So thank you. Any other comments? Questions? Roll call, please, then. Councilor Cano. Aye. Councilor Ray. Aye. Councilor Amos Smith. Aye. Councilor Benson. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. The next item is 11F, the appointment to the Municipal Museum Community Advisory Group. We received an application from Harold Henry Gregory, and he was recommended for appointment by the interim museum director and by the vice president of the museum advisory group. If there are no objections, I would like to appoint him to the advisory group. He is hereby appointed. This leaves us with one vacancy uh, on this particular group. I'd like to encourage community members to look at the uh, requirements and uh, if you're interested, pick up an application in the town clerk's office. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council Benson. I just want to note that I think that it needs to be um, a resident of the town of Silver City um, because all of the external appointments have been made. Okay, thank you. This concludes the business of the town of Silver City. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Council Ray? Before I make a motion, I want to make a statement that I should be that should be corrected. Last town council meeting, I mentioned that we were the only municipality that didn't allow a side by side. I was wrong in saying that. What I meant to say is that out of all the municipalities that have allowed it that went to the town council we're the only ones that have to, that hasn't done it. All the rest of them that they have um, that were presented to them have allowed it. Uh, we have we have ordered it down. So I hope it clarifies what, what I wanted to say. Anyway, I make a motion to adjourn. Councilor Sergeant. Councilor Amos Brent. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 We're hereby adjourned.